Matters. Welcome to Community Matters. Today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, foster parenting. There are thousands of children in the state of Georgia who desperately need foster care. Today we're going to be talking to the Chastains, Fran and Ricky, who have opened up their home and their hearts to children here in the Northeast Georgia area. To date, they have fostered and adopted a total of 13 kids. That's a lot. That's a lot of love. It's a lot of sacrifice. We're going to be talking to the Chastains about the process of foster care, the need of foster care, and what the long-term impacts foster caring has upon the children. You'll hear from the children directly. You'll hear what they have to say. They'll introduce themselves. You'll hear, hear about their interests and about their desires. What a wonderful, wonderful thing foster parenting is. And we invite you to learn more about becoming a foster parent. The Department of Family and Children's Services is desperately looking for qualified families who will open up their hearts and home to children in the North Georgia area. I'm Trisha Heiss, and this is Community Matters. We are in the home of Ricky and Fran Chastain, and I have an opportunity to interview them about the importance of foster care here today. And um, we're joined with a lot of your family, if not all of them, right, Fran? This is all the immediate family, yes. This is amazing. Hi, Ricky, how are you? Good. Good. Um, Fran, I know that you are such an advocate for protecting children, for providing for kids, and for opening up your home um, and loving and accepting children that are in need. Can you tell us a little bit about that, about how you decided to start to be a foster parent? Well, honestly, we uh, wanted to adopt. We had two biological children, and we wanted to adopt. And international adoption was not in our, you know, not in our budget. So we looked into how to adopt within the state, and we went through classes and learned what a great need there was for children to have a place to go if their family was in turmoil. And um, we were approved on one day and we had two children on the next and uh, those two children are our children now and um, it just sort of started on a roll and we went from there. Wow that's phenomenal. When you say that you went through the state are you referring to the Department of Family and Children's Services? Yes. Okay. Yes they have a training process that you have to go through a lot of background checks and um, classes as to because most children if you think about a family in turmoil they're um, they're not going to be like your biological children when they first come to you. They're they're afraid, you know. They they've been in some type of disruption and and uh, they don't know you. And you just have to sort of know the steps and you have to learn the rules. There are lots of rules. Wow, Ricky, whose idea was this? Was it your idea? Was it Fran's idea? Was it something that you both came up with together? We both came up with it together. And how was your heart? Was it open to the idea? Mm-hmm. It was. What can you give us a little bit of a um, a little bit of background of, of you and and where you came from and how how it was that your heart opened up to children and to allow children into your home? Well, I've always wanted kids, and uh, when we had Joe and Frank couldn't have any more because we was going to try to have at least four, and uh, we talked about it prayed about it, and went into foster care. And then we, it hadn't stopped till now, so. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been doing this? A little over 13 years, and uh, we we recently told DFACS we would be done for a while. Our our kids were, were filling up the house, so. Well, you've, you've got all of your children here today. We do. And um, I've never felt um, so at home and so loved. And I just just met you all, so this is this is amazing. Um, if you could tell us um, about some positive experiences that you have had over the past 13 years, and whether or not you would encourage other people to open up their homes to foster care. Well, I always encourage people to open up their homes if they're prepared. Um, the positives are the children. Um, 
the adoptions are obviously, you know, the ultimate of the positives. But some children come through and they need to stay with you two days, three days. And it's positive to see them get to go back to their parents, you know, or grandparents. You know, maybe the parents had some legal issues and they get to go to an aunt or a grandparent. And, and that's positive to know that you gave them a safe and loving home for a few days. And then um, probably the longest that didn't stay permanently is a, a young little boy that stayed about 18 months. And, and, and it was positive to see him get to go home to his mother. She worked hard. Uh, we worked with her. Defects worked with her. And... Um, you know, it's a positive to see a family reunited and not torn apart. Who do you have in your lap here? This is Jerry. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> How old are you? Five. You are five years old. And what, um, how long has Jerry been in your care? Jerry was about 15 months old when he first came to the house. Wow. That, that is phenomenal. What type of services does the Department of Family and Children's Services provide to children and families when, when children come into, into a foster care setting? Well, they help provide their clothes. Um, it's usually a reimbursement process. Um, most children don't come with anything. Um, so we keep toothbrushes and toothpaste. Um, you know, but you usually not knowing what size is, you have to go get clothes, diapers, bottles, whatever it is that you need. Um, but defects reimburses. They help with child care because we work full time. And um, so our the kids that come to us either have to go to school or have to go to daycare. So, so um, they help with that. They have budgets for that. And um, so they pretty much help with anything the child needs all their medical expenses. Um, so, so it's really only about whether you have the space and the love. You certainly, I, I'm, I'm guessing you have the space. You have a lovely home here um, in, in the county. And how many bedrooms do you have? Well, it, it will sound like a giant house, but as you can see, we fill up this room. Yes, you um, do. We have four rooms in the basement uh -huh. uh, that I mean they're pretty much wall to wall there's nothing left in the basement but a bathroom <laughs> and then there's our bedroom here on this floor and then there's three bedrooms upstairs wow so that's three and four and one is eight eight, eight <laughs> bedrooms and are all the children in school um, we have three <laughs> in college and Jerry just finished pre-k so yes everybody's in school that so. is a wide and vast <laughs> time difference and maturity level difference. It is. Can you explain to the to the viewers that are watching this about what type of wraparound services or counseling services that the department facilitates or otherwise offers for the kids? While they're in care, it just depends on what they've been through as to what type of counseling they get. They always uh, make an analysis of, of what they need and they want it to be as positive as of an experience as they can. Um, we have counselors and therapists that we go to and then we've had some that come to the house to the children. So they're very good about making sure the kids get what they want. Um, if the children go home, um, they continue to do a follow-up plan with them. They don't just send them home and never see them again. Um, if they're adopted, then they also continue with their services and uh, then they have their insurance to go with as well. You mentioned that both you and Ricky work full-time jobs. What, what is it that you do? Um, I'm the Dean of Students at the local technical college. Um, I still work with students and, and that's, I love my job. You know, I love my family first and uh, God first and then family, but um, then my job. I do love my job and working with young people, so. And Ricky, what do you do? I work at Scoville Fasteners, make uh, buttons for blue jeans and snout for jackets and stuff. How long have you been there? 30 years. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if they give away gold watches anymore, <laughs> but you deserve one. <laughs> Are you going to retire anytime soon or? In about 20 years, I guess. About 20 years after Jerry gets through college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just introduce um, some of the children that you have here on the sofa with you. Okay. I'd love to. Boom. This is Lily. Hi, Lily. Hey. 
And you met Jerry. This is our oldest son. This is Donnie. Hi, Donnie. Oh. And this is Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Behind Donnie. This is Will down here trying not to fall out the bean bag. And then we have Norberto, Daniel, Ed, Carly, the oldest, Nicole, Caleb, Joe, and Mariella. Wow. You, every one of your children are absolutely beautiful. They are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, um, did you say except for me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, especially me, especially me. Um, well, I want to ask some questions. You said this is your oldest this child? Is, Nicole is Nicole my oldest. Is. Donnie is the oldest male. Male. Okay, Donnie. <laughs> um, how old are you? I'm 21. 21, 21. years old. Are you, You're in school? I am at North Georgia Tech. Oh, that's fantastic. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to be a teacher. So. That's great. That is great. How is it growing up with a bunch of kids? Hey, it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the uh, most difficult thing you've ever had to share? Mm, I don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the um, what is the one thing that you like to share? Time. Time, I guess. Time. Do you help your younger siblings? Well, I help my mom with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there um, some different tasks and duties that are divided up amongst the children? Oh, yeah. We couldn't do it unless we were one big team. Everybody has a daily chore. Um, and then we have Saturday chores so that we get the house clean. Uh -huh. um, so it, their daily chores are probably five to ten minutes tops. Um, when they're in school, they do them before they go to school. And um, the oldest three are in college, and uh, they're a huge help. Um, I have to brag on, on our two biological children, Nicole and Joe, have always uh, been helpful. They're, they're big advocates themselves um, for kids, and um, they can joke and pick at the best of them, but he loves them. He's got a bigger heart than he likes people to think. But uh, um, We've always made it a family thing. We've, you know, we've we've tried to consult with each other, and it's been a gradual thing. We didn't go to, from zero to thirteen, so, but um, it it works. Some days we don't know how it works, but it works. <laughs> well, you just mentioned that um, you've decided to tell the Department of Family and Children's Services that you guys need a timeout. Um, I guess that happened in March of this year. It did. Um, we really truly live from wall to wall of the house and as much as we like to be team members with defects um, the kids that come into foster care including these kids they don't really like defects um, it's not the defects did anything wrong it's just a time period of their life that you know they may not want to remember and so they're they're about to that age where they're like let's have a time out let, let's just you know because defect still comes to visit you know when when they're in when you have foster children they come once or twice a month um they're supposed to see the kids pretty regularly um, which is a good thing but it also makes the kids when they're in care feel a little invaded um like someone's always watching so mm. we we figured we were full we, we don't have a vehicle big enough <laughs> we, we have a 15 passenger van we, don't, we couldn't put anybody else anywhere so what are some of the most challenging times that you have had over the course of the last 20 years probably the first challenge that I remember being um, a little scary was that um, we were very attached to our first two children and there was a time period where we weren't sure that they were going to get to remain ours and be our forever children. That, that was pretty scary um, because we weren't comfortable. You know, we've always tried to work with birth parents and be comfortable when it's time for them to go home, but you know when it's not time either. And uh, But sometimes, you know, it just depends on the legal system and what defects thinks. But um, we've learned to, to really rely on prayer and God and, and and that's where we go when we're afraid of what's going to happen. And so that all worked out well. Um, we've also, you know, there's been scary times where uh, Rick was in China for 30 days. And so I was here by myself with 
six kids, I think, at that point. And um, we had a parent of one of the children we had, you know, wanting to kidnap that child because they wanted him back. And I can understand that part, but that became a little scary. That's challenging when you when you have a, a situation that's that might be scary, you know. But it also turned out well. So. Good. What are some of the most rewarding memories that you have? Every adoption is is more than rewarding. Um, Children getting to go home when you know it's the right thing is still rewarding. They take a little piece of your heart, but it's still very rewarding to know that you had a part in helping a family recuperate from whatever tragedy or you know situation that they've been through at that point. Um, you've mentioned the fact that um, God is first in your life and um, that you believe in the power of prayer and. Are the children? Are you and the children involved in a, a church? You can. Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we attend a torch. Okay. And they they pray for us all the time. It's nice to have a friend in prayer. Oh yeah. <laughs> and most of uh, most all the kids are involved in something at the torch. So. We think Caleb's gonna be the next preacher. So. Oh really? <laughs> He actually has a speaking engagement this Sunday. So. Really? Where are you speaking? I'll be speaking at a retirement home this Sunday. And we're what? here locally? Yes, ma'am. Is that something that you feel led to do, called to do? Yes, ma'am. I always love to see people touched by the Word of God, and I just love being able to help do that. So I see something that I'll be able to do in the future. That's fantastic. Well, um, are, are the children involved in extracurricular activities? Well, yes. Because <laughs> I was going to ask how you manage that, that schedule. That would have to be um, hard. Typically, I do mornings. I get them to school um, with the help of my mom. Okay. Um, we don't typically use the buses. We, we like to transport them there. Um, so in the mornings, and I don't get off until later in the afternoon, Rick gets off earlier, he does afternoons. Um, it's great when they start school activities because that way they can just stay after school, so that helps a lot. Uh -huh. um, but this spring we had a drama, we had chorus, we had three in track, then we had spring football, and this fall we'll have four, possibly five, playing football. And we have band, which she's in color guard. Uh, she'll be a senior this year. Jamie will be a senior this year. So it, it's on the go all the time. And then they're very involved in the, the youth group at the Torch. So um, it's 100% go. 100% <laughs> go. Okay, how many of you can drive? <laughs> we have one, two, three, three drivers and two with their learners. Two so with their learners. One and two more about to have their learners. <laughs> okay, who has their learners right now? Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> so that'll be help more helpful when when people can start helping with transportation. As long as it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true mother. Nicole typically lives in Brunswick because she's in college down in Brunswick, mm -hmm. but Joe and Donnie helps out a lot with transportation when needed, so uh, it's very helpful. Now, where are you in school? Norfolk And what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going for auto collision. Repair? Yeah. I'm one of those people that needs that. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But that's, that is a great industry to, to be in, a great profession to have. Um, very skilled work, I guess, in order to be able to very detailed. Have to go by the rules. On. Yes, yes. Well, um, guys, what what type? Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to have twelve brothers and sisters? Fun. Is it fun? Sometimes. Sometimes. There's definitely Most never a dull moment. No. Who is the jokester? Is there more than one jokester? Yeah. Everybody <laughs> points to him. I like your hat. Thank you. But I really like your t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. 
<laughs> is there more than one jokester or is that it? Are you it? No, this no, one. No, that is. one too. Oh, this one right here. Two brothers. Two of them. Me too. You too. Me too. See, we yeah. try. We don't always get the joke. Who's the serious <laughs> one? The quiet, serious one. Probably Joel. Uh, I don't know. There's not one. one. There's the not. Quiet. <laughs> the fine quiet. The fine quiet. Not yelling. Can't be quiet. Uh, I don't think. There's no one. <laughs> there's serious. Not one. Lily would be the serious one. I. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Quiet. She's a small one. Yeah. Serious, yes. <laughs> Miss Lily over there hiding. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to go into criminal justice to be a lawyer. That sounds awesome. Where do you want to go to school? UGA. That's great. You just got to keep your grades up and you can be anything that you want to be. You got to focus very hard and study a lot. Made the honor roll this year. Yay, that is fantastic. Absolutely awesome. And what grade are you in? I'm going into eighth grade. And what school do you go to? South Haverish Chan Middle Haver. School. It won't be long before you're in ninth grade academy no. and all that stuff. That's right. And we'll be here before you know it. <laughs> Guys, you all look so studious over there with those glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> is that a disguise? You just throw them down and then all of a sudden you're Superman? Are either one of you Superman? Four no? Eyes. <laughs> what is your favorite activity? Um, <laughs> probably like for me, it would be like wrestling or football. Yeah. Football. Okay. Football? Mm -hmm. What about you? Probably soccer. Soccer? Yep. Football? How about you, young man? He's a drum. Are you a drummer? Just drum. Drama. You're the drama guy. Okay, great. Were you the? Are you the guy that was in the play? <laughs> Lily was in the play. <laughs> Lily was in the play. Well, d if you had um, if you had an opportunity to talk to a child that was going to have to go into foster care, could you give him or her a piece of advice? Something to kind of help them? Is there something that you could say to, to a kid that was facing that? Are there any words of encouragement? There's going to be a good day. There's going to be a good day. One day will be a good day. I like that. I like that. That's, that's a good piece of advice. Carly, how about you? <laughs> has there been anything, Carly, that has helped you? My mom. Mm -hmm. She your rock? Yeah. Carly's probably the one that's spent the most time in foster care. So, we're a long road, but we got there. It's amazing to me that you have the courage and the strength to open your heart and your home to um, children. Um, and one of the things that we feel that is very important is that we get the word out that it, there's a need. Um, and I'm sure you probably hear that as often as we do, which is that the department needs places for kids to go for short term and for long term issues. So. Um, do you have any words of encouragement for people that are considering foster care? I wouldn't want anybody to jump into it not knowing all the ins and the outs, but I would encourage people to think about whether they could help one sibling group or one child. And um, of course we believe in prayer and, and to pray about it and to know that it was the right thing for them. But what you get from helping one child is it's just a heart full of love to go forward whether you keep that child forever or whether you help them go home um, I wish more people would do it um, I think that's our next goal now that um, we're not fostering is to try to get other people to foster unfortunately when I spoke to the defects office in Habersham they still hadn't had a lot of interest so we've got to pull together as a community 
it's a community thing. If you don't help children, then what's next for the community? Who will be there when we retire? <laughs> right. <laughs> Out of all of you, ch your, you children that are here, is there anyone when you grow up that you're willing to be a foster parent? Wow. It's a good group of kids. <laughs> <laughs> you all are laughing, but I'm going to tell you something. You just pulled my heartstrings really, really like, you just pulled the rip cord right out. So that's amazing that you all, um, are willing to, to open your own hearts and your own lives and your own homes to a, to a person or a child that's in need. Is there anyone here that um, um, is in gymnastics or ballet? Nope. Anyone here um, who plays an instrument? Play the flute. Oh, yeah. play the flute. <laughs> Lily? The clarinet. The clarinet. That's got to be a hard instrument to play. Both of them. Those are both considered what woodwinds or something like that. And you're going into the eighth grade. And you're going into the twelfth grade. Twelfth grade. And you are the majorette. No. No. You are the majorette. Color guard. Color guard. And what do you do? Nothing. Nothing. Track. Or didn't run track, you threw it. You throw a shot put or discus? Just keep up. Gotta have some upper body strength for that. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> and are you at Habersham Central? Yes, sir. Great. I have had the pleasure and honor of meeting your very large dog. Well, actually, I just waved to him because I was kind of scared to approach the approach his home. But how many pets do y'all have? Eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. four. A lot. A lot. Birds. Birds. Ten. Birds. Ten. Birds. Those two parrots. Yeah, we have two the parrots. They count for <laughs> grandmother's pets too. Oh, we okay. Help take care of them. Okay. Cats, uh, Everywhere. <laughs> and then we have, have a snake. That one we have possum. Snake. We have a snake. possum. One possum. A snake. Where's the snake? She's next door. Oh, it's next door. Okay, good. <laughs> that's where I need to stay. <laughs> well, I think that there's a bulldog that's laying beside me, and he has snored throughout this entire interview. <laughs> For the longest time, I couldn't figure out where he was. It just sounded like a snore box underneath the table. So you have some ferrets. You have a bulldog. You have a mastiff. Oh, you, you, re you recounted, Jerry, you came up with 11 pets? It's changing the number. Okay. You have cats. Do you have any chickens? Yes. 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 Do they lay eggs? Yes. yes. Have you and Ricky thought about or talked about any ways that you can help or support other parents who are considering being foster parents? I think, I, I think we could. Uh, if anybody's considering, all they have to do is call us a week and We'll be glad to talk to them and help them get started. I think it's important to have a mentoring couple or couples when you go into foster care. Okay. You gotta have a big support group to support you through it, because it, it can be stressful. Um, when we came in, the, there was a wonderful couple that, that helped us. Um, I'd call with questions, you know, and, and we're still friends. Um, with them, we don't see them very often. And then we helped another family. Um, and, and she and I talk all the time when, when they started, because they started after us. So it is important to find someone else who's done it and uh, has some experience, even just to fill out the paperwork. <laughs> you know, there's monthly paperwork that has to be done. And, um, but just knowing different children's behaviors. Um, the friend that the, the couple that we've tried to mentor over the years had a little girl that we're pretty sure didn't know any English whatsoever. And um, she continued to have these, pitch these fits and just scream and scream and scream. And 
you know, she and I talked through that, some different aspects of what she could do. And, uh, you know, she just needed somebody who had dealt with it before. So you, know, you just got to have somebody to talk to because they do sometimes <coughs> come with um, things that you're not used to. Did you have anyone to help you or mentor you when you guys got started? We did. We did. And you found that to be helpful? Very much so. Awesome. Do you have anything else that you would like to add or otherwise tell us? Just consider, of course we'd love for everybody to come out and be a foster parent, but it isn't for everybody, but we hope we'll encourage some people to be that foster parent. Anyone can contact us if they want to know more about it. Um, but just think about a child that you know and where would they go if they have nowhere else to go. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time and opening up your, your hearts and your home to us. And, and Jerry, are you opening up the world to everybody? <laughs> I just want to thank you all for your willingness to talk to me and um, for being so polite. You all are so well behaved. I don't know that I, the most part, I don't know that I could have sat still for this long as a young person. So, well, good luck if you would just you know keep us updated as to where um, where you guys are going to be, ladies going to be, and um, would love to come out and watch you as you take the field to march, or if you're in another drama play or anything like that. You just need to keep us updated, and we would love to love to follow up with you and. Um, come support you in that. I'm Trisha Heiss and thank you once again for watching Community Matters. On today's segment you learned about the importance of foster caring. There are so many children in the North Georgia area that are looking for foster homes and you are a part of the solution to the problem. You can open up your, your heart and your home to children who are in need. As the Chastains invited you to do, we encourage you with Now Habersham to reach out to the Chastains and to open up that line of communication about becoming a foster care family. The Department of Family and Children's Services certainly will also listen to you and your desires in order to help children of this area. We hope that you've enjoyed this segment and found it helpful, and we encourage you to consider becoming a foster care family. Thank you once again for watching Community Matters.